got a little static, but if anyone can hear me okay, uh, I'm Josh Miller, and as this slide shows, I'm here to talk to you today about macOS Laps for randomizing your local admin password on your Mac device. And as you can see, very many different ways of reaching me, Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, Slack. So let's jump right into it. So what is LAPS? Well, for those who don't know, it stands for Local Administrator Password Solution in the Windows side of the world. Um, and what this will do is it randomizes the local admin password using a group policy on Windows that checks for an expiration date and then after changing the password, we'll set a new expiration date, so nothing too crazy. Then via the LAPS UI, an administrator who is deemed able to view those said passwords in the Active Directory computer object, they will be able to see that password as well as reset it by setting the expiration date to a already passed date. Normally, this is used with Active Directory and is exclusive to Windows clients. So, um, and this does require schema extension, so if you haven't extended your schema form laps, you would need that in order to utilize this service. I also have a link that I'll be posting these slides later that'll take you right to Microsoft's documentation on their laps service, where to get the download, how to extend your schema. Um, that actual schema extension, it, when you go to configure it, is under computer configuration, policies, uh, administrative templates. Um, you can enable local admin password management, and you can set complexity, length, and age. And one of the benefits of it is you could actually, technically, if you wanted to set the password to expire in like an hour, you could give this local admin password to a user to install a piece of software, and then as soon as that expiration date passes, then it changes. So, why you use this? Well, probably the biggest reason is your admin account is usually the same name and password on every machine. So, definitely would be very easy for a hacker to get that information in some way, shape, or form. And once they do, they technically have access to all of your machines with local admin access. Not as terrible as them having domain level access, but still, they could wreak some havoc. Um, and the password, and I'm guilty of this too, it, when we had our password the same on all of our Macs and a different password on all our PCs, it was something pretty easy. I mean, it wasn't something like, I mean, it, there was some complexity to it, but it was something that like you could memorize and be able to type with your eyes closed. So, and honestly, the admin account should be used less and less. Like, we're moving into an age where users are okay with helping themselves. We should be moving towards self-service, and you should use like a software management tool to promote self-service uh, and stop entering this admin password all the time. It should only be used for you know, extreme situations. I mean, you could use Monkey, Big Fix, Jamf, SCCM. I mean, pick your poison. So why laps for Mac OS? Well, at least in our environment, it's a central storage and active directory of a randomized local administrator password. So it's put in a location where only domain admins are able to view that password. Pretty much uh, the philosophy here is to have the same behavior as the group policy on Windows, but utilizing that on the Mac and customizable settings. We want to be able to customize it and make it like exactly how we want it versus, you know, just kind of taking what Microsoft offers out of the box for laps. So it was a little bit of a quest to determine how this worked. Um, had some help from a lot of Mac admins, but uh, there's two fields that uh, Active Directory uses for laps, and those two fields are DS, now this is showing them on the Mac side, but it's DS attribute type native MS, MCS, admin password ex expiration time, which will store the expiration time, and then this field, which will actually store the password. And these are attached to the computer object in Active Directory on every machine. And even though your Macs won't have these attributes by default, you can add them. 
The computer account is what's used to authenticate to Active Directory and write the password on Windows because the computer account is able to write attributes to itself. However, it cannot read that password field. It can read the expiration time, but it can't read the password field. So then that way you've kind of got a little bit of security there because even if somebody got the computer account, they're still not going to be able to figure out that local admin password because it's stored in a field that's only readable by who you deem via your Active Directory. Now, the other thing to determine was we had to figure out how time was calculated with Active Directory. I'm going to talk a little more about this later, but uh, Windows kind of has their own unique way of calculating time in Active Directory versus Linux and Mac OS. So that's where Mac OS Laps was born. It's a Python script, and it uses Open Directory on the Mac so it can use your Active Directory bound computer account to authenticate to Active Directory. And it will read the expiration time on the, of the password from Active Directory. If there currently isn't an expiration time, which all of your Macs would not have an expiration time, it will set a default expiration time of January 1st, 2001, so that it will force it to make a change. And then it will change the password for the local admin if it has expired or you've never set one and set a new expiration time and write both values back to Active Directory. So, and the computer account will be used to do all of this. So in other words, like I said before, computer account will write the password, can't read the password, it's a one-time deal. So once this script is done, your Mac has no knowledge of that password only your Active Directory and the actual account when you go to log in. So it's success. We have local admin, we have randomized local admin passwords on Mac OS. Sorry, I wanted an excuse to use Napoleon Dynamite, so. <laughs> so as I got writing this, I wanted to do some additional features. So what I wanted to do is make it so we could do it the Mac OS way you can create a configuration profile in your MDM of choice or AP list file to specify settings for Mac OS laps. The most obvious one, your local admin account, because everyone has a different local admin account name. So this is just a string value that you say what your local admin account is specified as. Days to expiration, how often you want the password to expire. Um, there are default values for all of these. Um, you could set it to 30 days, you could set it to 90 days, you could set it to 14 days, you could set it to two days, whatever you'd like. Password length, how long do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a 45 character long password or do you want it to be an eight character password? I'd probably suggest something at least 15 to 20 just to be more secure. This one's an interesting one. Um, I do remove the local admin keychain because most likely you're never logging in with a local admin account. You're usually using it to elevate. And we're not going to know that old password. That's enabled by default, but if for some reason you wanted to keep the local admin keychain, you could specify this key and set it to false and it would not remove the keychain. And then the most exciting one, removing password characters because you want to exclude those characters that look the same. If you look real closely at those three there, that's an I, a lowercase l, and a pipe. And boy, do they look really close, don't they? So reading that out of uh, the LAPS UI can be very annoying. So you could go in here and say, I don't want those keys in my, those characters in my password, and they won't be there. And finally, we have logging. So all logging is performed and written on every run to that path. So you can easily go in there on a client and see just what's happening as this is run. The Python script comes with a launch daemon. It's available on GitHub and it will run at 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 4 p.m. You can obviously change that, but I felt that like most times and the best times to run that is obviously when they're on your network and able to contact Active Directory. So with any project, there are some challenges with Mac OS Laps. Um, what we talked about earlier with the ha Windows has its own interpretation of its time in Active Directory known as Windows time. <laughs> uh, 
So, and the time actually has to be converted to epoch time to read when the expiration date actually is. And then if we change the password, we have to convert that back to Windows time so that we can write that to Active Directory. The other th issue is, um, this is a Python script, and we all know you could technically go in, open that Python script, and change it to your heart's content, because it's Python, and that's okay. But in some senses, I can see where that might not be okay. And if a user's using the local admin account for File Vault, well, we're not gonna be able to change the password because we're technically not gonna know the random password. So when it changes it, it's obviously not gonna change File Vault. This is one I'm kind of struggling with, but uh, I'm kind of trying to gauge, like, I mean, would you rather use a personal recovery key for File Vault or maybe using the, I mean, I don't understand using the local admin account when if you're setting a 20 character random password, I mean, the individual recovery key or uh, institutional recovery key are a random key as well. Well, with that, just in the past month, I would say, uh, I actually decided, at least with the Python one, to write Mac OS Laps in Swift. So now we have Mac OS Laps in Swift. What that means is, uh, for one, the old project's been renamed and moved. So, uh, if you, and I do recommend using the older project if you have 10.9 or below clients. Um, I haven't tested the Swift version on anything more than 10.10 plus. But uh, one of the biggest things, and at least for our organization, that our organization is very excited about is we can sign this code. So this code can't be modified. It'll be a signed application. The other thing I added is there's actually 10 passwords generated when this script runs, and then one of those is randomly picked. So it's just an added layer of security, just another hoop. Um, but yes, it makes 10 random passwords, and then it decides to pick one of those at random. Logging's a little better. It's a little cleaner, um, and it seems to function pretty well. Not a whole lot changed there. Like I said, moving to 10.10 uh, 10 plus. And then, side note, it seems faster than, a Pyth than the Python script. It seems to fire off a lot faster, but I'll let you guys judge that. So now, enough with the whole slide thing. Let's have a demo and have some fun. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to go out here, and I'm actually going to show, and I know that's pretty small, but it's okay, you guys can see this local admin password for my machine because it's obviously going to change. So currently it's written into Active Directory. And once I find my mouse, you'll see that it expires on August 12th, 2017 at 10.08 a.m. So I'm going to go ahead and say it actually expired today at 10 o'clock a.m. So now I've set that reset request. And let's go over to the terminal. And sometimes this actually does take a few minutes to populate because it has to write through Active Directory and depending on your connection to Active Directory. And you can run the lapse command from the command line. Uh, obviously it has to run as root. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, give me just a second. Or not. Okay, it's not letting me zoom in, but actually, I'm s huh? I did, it didn't, there it goes. All right. So actually, since it cleared it already, but you'll see there now that it's changed the password, it says password change is not required as password for this account does not expire until Saturday, August 12th, 10.58 a.m. So we can actually go back, and I can do this again, of course. And we can go here and hit search, and you'll see that the password's changed. And it's now different in Active Directory and has that new expiration date. So since we couldn't see the initial part, we'll just go ahead and expire it one more time and run that again.
So you see three things hit the log there. Um, these are also logged to the logging file that's on the right side. But uh, you can see that it says local admin password has expired. It's been changed with a new expiration date. And then that last one about the keychain, I don't have a keychain for my uh, local admin account because I don't ever use it unless I'm elevating. And that's why that first message came up. And on the right side here, this is the log that's written to the library logs folder. And we'll give you the ability to go through and see it run as it goes through. So you could set exclusion characters. And we can actually do that with Xcode. And I'll actually just bring up the project and do a couple exclusions just to kind of give you guys a preview here. But what I'm doing right now, uh, by default, I exclude the apostrophe on the Mac side. My Windows admin brought to my attention that the apostrophe on the Mac side, for whatever reason, when you go to type it in on the Windows side, you can't. You actually have to open character map in order to type that apostrophe. So I've actually excluded that by default so that if a Windows user is typing the local admin password on a Mac, they don't run into that issue. But for instance, you could go in. Now I'm doing it here, so we, but you could do it with a configuration profile. Uh, it's just a string of remove past cares, but you could say, I don't want at, and I don't want pound sign, and I don't want, let's say, an ampersand. So I'll put those in there, and we'll go expire the password again. And actually, we have to run it from Xcode. So I'll run with those exclusion characters. And I know this is a little small, but password change is required. And uh, it's gone ahead and done the password change, and it's taking those exclusion characters into consideration. So we shouldn't see any at hashtags or ampersands in the password, which we don't. So another interesting request I got was the ability to remove an entire character set. So I have a user who said, my password only needs to be numbers, uppercase, lowercase numbers, and symbols, or I'm sorry, decimal digits as in numbers but they didn't need symbols. So what you can do is there, as of yesterday, there is a new key called exclusion sets. So what we can do is actually take these symbols out and we can put in here, I don't want symbols. It's an array with strings, so you can do symbols, numbers, and letters. So we'll go ahead and do symbols. And we've expired the password, I believe, and we'll go ahead and run that. Password expired, changed the password, wrote it back to Active Directory. So now, when we go and look at the password, there are now no symbols. So the nice thing about this product is it's fully customizable to whatever your requirements are at your institution. So. Now I want to talk a little bit about future features. So with future features, uh, I kind of would like to support for File Vault local admin user if that's something that people really need. Um, but I'd kind of like to get a discussion going about like you know the individual recovery keys versus the random local admin password. Like what do you think is more efficient? Um, the excluding an entire character set is something we actually just were able to implement with the new configuration setting called exclusion sets. Sending the password to an MDM solution. I don't know if there's any interest in this, but like instead of like having to RDP into a Windows machine and pull it up in the Laps UI, maybe it would be beneficial for it to be in Jamf or an MDM solution of your choice. <laughs> Adding a Laps UI for Mac OS clients, we could I mean, is there interest in maybe like a Laps UI so that you could see Windows and Mac passwords by opening it on your local Mac instead of, once again, having to RDP into another Windows machine? And 
any kind of like suggestions that people have. So this is kind of a shorter presentation because there isn't a whole lot to talk about with LAPS. So I went through a demonstration. So this is kind of the part where I want to kind of get a discussion going and see like what people are doing in their environments, how they're using, how, like what they'd like to see with their local admin accounts, how they're working with things. So um, suggestions on how LAPS works. Like I said, it's not a really like complicated thing, but I'd like to gauge some interest. So I'd like to go ahead and open up for discussion and see what anybody wants to say. All right, we got one in the back. <laughs> so you said that open directory is, is needed? Um, uh, it's just using the uh, open directory protocols on Mac OS to connect to Active Directory. So it's, you'd have to be bound to Active Directory in order to use this, yes. So you're bound to Active Directory, but do you also have to have like an Open Directory server? Or no, 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 oh, no, no, okay. no. It's just using the uh, Open Directory functions to utilize Active Directory. Good question, though. Over here. Are those uh, Active Directory? Um, Attributes, are they the same attributes that the Windows clients use? They do, they are, yes. They are the same attributes. So, as I understand it, right now you would need to be bound to an Active Directory domain yes. for this? Yes, that is correct. Would it be possible to make this work through something like Enterprise Connect, where you're not directly bound to the domain, but you do have that connection? I was actually talking to Joel about this. Um, we were thinking of like creating computer objects, because he's kind of doing the same thing with uh, certificates for Nomad, and we were thinking of maybe doing kind of the same thing and writing these attributes to that computer object, which would kind of produce the same thing. Do you have any thoughts about doing MDM implementation for like something using like uh, simple MDMs API to roll out a per device profile uh, containing that user information so that it's, you know, you generate the, the profile in, in LAPS, and have that deployed out through a mobile device manager. That's, I mean, that, that's the configuration settings already right. go through, so, but that's a great idea. I mean, I would be hap happy to entertain that to make cool. it even easier. That'd be awesome for those of us who want to use a feature like this but don't have a directory service Correct. in our environment. Yeah, I'd be totally game for that. Cool. <laughs> I just want to say we've looked at LAPS a little bit. We've talked about it, mm -hmm. but one of the downsides was that we didn't have anything similar on the Mac side, and I really like the idea that of having the option of writing it to the exact same place. Mm -hmm. The help desk team can use the exact same tool, and I think if there was a Mac UI for it, that would be really cool because they're mostly, they, they have Macs and they're running Windows in a VM when they need right. it. Because they support both. We have both on campus kind of in equal numbers. Exactly. But that would be a really useful addition for us, but I'm really happy to see this. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I've started playing with it a little bit um, mm -hmm. and have gone more the route of we are a Jamf shop, so pushing the script via Jamf yep. as opposed to the launch agents. Sure. I guess what would be an advantage of one over the other? The launch agent was just kind of there because, you know, if somebody didn't have an MDM and they had Active Directory, but, I mean, you could easily create a policy that says run this every day at such and such time. So you could use either, to be honest. So if we use Centrify to join to the domain, will mm -hmm. this still work? I would think so. As long as your scheme is extended and has those attributes, you should be able to write them. And uh, one important question is, uh, so not all the machines will come into domain often. So mm -hmm. in case uh, if some, uh, some user is outside and uh, he's, he's having the 
uh, older password. Mm -hmm. So do you have the record of the older passwords? You have the older password until it's actually changed on the machine, then it's written to Active Directory. So if the password hasn't changed on the machine, there's logic built into this that if it can't connect to Active Directory, it's not going to perform the change or even check. So it won't do oh. any of the, so the only way it will actually change is if you have a consistent connection to Active Directory at that time via VPN or you're on the network. Okay. So and the other thing is, uh, uh, as we are uh, mainly concerned about Mac, uh, so if you're showing some uh, GUI on Mac, it would be fair enough. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Just one comment to add to your question with the way I've played with it so far is in for my solution, Jamf, I have it the policy only run if they have an IP address that's part of our campuses. So yeah. then it's not getting, because I was getting errors when people were off campus and it was running. Correct, because so. it's built to say, I, hey, I can't connect Active Directory, yeah. and it'll just fail. Yep. Oh, I'm liking this. Lots of questions. Uh, I'm using the uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln's laps for Mac. Mm -hmm. um, does this, I've noticed this is integrating with AD a lot better. Were there any other sort of features or things you were emphasizing when creating it uh, versus that solution? I, the only features I was thinking about doing were the ones that I listed there above, but I mean, if you have other ones that you think that would be better, I would be happy to look into them and possibly accommodate them. But uh, I would mean. Would love the Mac, would love a Mac laps viewing client, but just getting the integration with window with Max into the Windows Labs field is impressive. Right. Well, thanks. Is, is there an option to um, to trigger a password reset directly from the client? Uh, not directly from the client. Like you probably what you would have to do is run that executable after you've set the uh, reset. But that would be something that I'd like to do set a trigger so that you could force a reset. Okay. Other questions or concerns? Anything you guys would like to see? Um, I know the demo was a little blurry, but hopefully I could, I mean, I can show anybody one-on-one -on -one as well. I know this was a shorter session, but like I said, lapses and all that complicated. But if you have other questions or concerns, oh, we have got another one. All right. Not a question, but more of uh, I would be interested to see it go be able to call and write like an extension attribute to the asset in Jam for something like that, so okay. that you could pull it from the MDM. And sure, uh, I think that would be you know really useful, especially for people who are remote or traveling. You can just quickly pull it up and, and get yeah. it in there. All right. Other questions or concerns? Oh, we got another one. I just want to see if you wanted to talk about maybe a best way to like send a password to somebody who, who needs it. Um, uh, you, you get a reset. I mean, uh, how, how, are, how are other people doing that? How are passwords being well, shared? With, with these local admin passwords, I mean, you could set an expiration date of I mean, you could securely send it over secure email, or you could re remote in and give it to them. I mean, because you could say, like, this only works for 30 minutes, and then the next time they check in, it just changes it. So you've got that benefit with your users, and it, that would be helpful in some of those least privileged situations where someone wants to install a piece of software that maybe you're not offering yet, and you could be like, here's a local admin password, but it's only going to work for this amount of time, and once that time passes, it'll change again, so. I'd like the, to see the availability of um, looking at the last time the user was logged in okay. and invoking the password reset based on that. Maybe you have a policy set that it changes once a month, but if the user logs in, it changes within 48 hours. Okay, yeah.
So we use CyberArk in our environment. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you or anybody else in the room has any experience with CyberArk and know if this is something that could feed data I there. have no experience with CyberArk, I'm sorry. But, uh, I mean, I'd be interested in seeing if we could feed data into it. Okay, thanks. Sure. Uh, so currently we're using Jamf for, like you mentioned, to send out um, every day a new password to the local admin. Mm -hmm. And as a beta, we did it to all of us IT engineers, which has now been the biggest nightmare of our lives. <laughs> so I'm curious, is there a way to get that password to show up locally for us so that we're not having to log into Jamf on a day-to-day -day basis so that we can do day-to-day -day triaging? Uh, I mean, we could look at a way of storing the password maybe in like the system keychain or something like that. but. Obviously, you would have to have some kind of admin account to unlock the system keychain to see that, because you want to be careful with like if you put it in like a local user's keychain, then they obviously can just look at it and be like, oh, I can log in. So, something we could look at and maybe figure out. But, but that's something we could scope individually, so we can say like specifically to the IT engineer. Well, yeah, because you could. Okay. Basically, what I would do is if that's something we were going to incorporate, we would add it to the configuration profile, and then you would customize your config profile to say with this key only to your IT engineers. Thank you. Yep. So are you guys not using File Vault in your environment? No, we are, but uh, we do not add our local admin account to our File Vault unlock. If we need to unlock it, we use the individual recovery key, which is also like 20 characters long. So, And then once it goes in, it tries to do a reset, but you can click cancel and log in with the local admin account. So it's not a huge deal. This is great. I'm loving this. <laughs> so I want to uh, bounce off of that with using the recovery key. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of methods do you have in place to rotate that key after it's been used? So uh, John Kitzmiller has a script, I believe, on his blog for Jamf that as soon as you log in, or as soon as you power that machine on and it's connected to the network with that key, using that key, Mac actually sets a uh, key value, I believe, in a P list saying that that individual recovery key was used, and then Jamf has a, an, a policy that you can write very easily that says, you know, if this key has been used, then trigger it and generate a new one so that your users aren't writing it down and, you know, using the same key over and over. You said that was John Kitzmiller? Yes, okay, John thanks. Kitzmiller. Yep. Other questions? Suggestions? Well, thanks everyone for coming. And uh, if you're interested in the project or like to contribute, please let me know. And thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>